släppa in ner tidigt här men uh, ni får ju tyvärr se mig äta också. Det, det är ett fel. Hej Jökerspackel, det är fint. Du tar den tid du behöver för dig själv. Jag vill inte se för det här, du vet det. Jag går kork upp här. Uh, jag har lite mukbang för det bli då. Befredel, tack för din uh, resub. Rätt i månader. Jesus Christ. Mm. Um. Okej, okay, så jag äter. Vänta. Jag måste tysta det här för jag kan inte prata. Ehm. Um. Jag äter burger eh, som jag gjort med hamburgare, alltså nötkött, ägg, keddarost, hot sauce och eh, be- i det här fallet bacon dressing då, jag orkar inte göra egen eh, bacon. Hej skogis. Fredags Birgitta. Stämmer väl överens med var jag kommer ifrån? Ja. Um. Vad tycker, ni att, eh, vad tycker ni att jag ska prata om idag? Lika sladdrig som Birgittas fint. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hon var en ordentlig kvinna också Social Wine uh. <clears throat> Jag har några saker att prata om Men uh, jag tänkte om ni hade några idéer Först. Alltså, om man ska prata med Gitta. Och nu kommer det. The Dreaded Historia-lektion. Från en kille som har läst lite med Gitta. Och faktiskt kan en del med Gitta. Um, Det första man ska veta om Birgitta var att hon var en riktig jävla tjuvkärring. Uh, och förutom sina uh, uppenbarelser, uppenbarelser som hon hade uh, så var hon um, starkt kritiskt emot ungdomens klädsel. Uh, 
Nej, så skulle det vara. Nej, jag menar inte rakt ut mot dig. Det var bara menat rakt ut mot chatten. <laughs> Men... Uh, hon var giftig när hon skrev... Uh, sina opinionstexter. Jag gillar, jag gillar nästan allting hon skrev. Mest för att det är så. Jag håller inte med om vad hon säger. Men allting hon skriver är väldigt underhållande att läsa. För hon är väldigt arg och hon är väldigt, hon är väldigt duktig på att artikulera hur arg hon är. Så får man chansen att läsa Birgittas texter Så tänker jag att man bör göra det För det är väldigt kul Det är inte så torrt som man tror att det ska vara Jag ska sluta äta om typ en sekund. Ja, hon borde ju oss hamna vid någonting för det, ja. Så, Rackskullar länkar oss en um, grej vi kan skriva på. Um, Som jag, alla, som jag tycker att alla borde skriva på. Jag skrev på det i sidofönstret här. Uh. <hör> Vad är det som hände? Ja, oh, okej. Okay. Men jag håller med. Tack så Rich. Gud. Så ta den sista. Jag ska ta den sista. Vi är klara nu. Så ska jag gå och hämta en öl. Så där. Kommer du att snacka om regeringshusbudget? Uh, inte jättemycket. Tror jag inte. Den. Um, alltså, jag vet inte. Uh, jag vet inte hur mycket. Vet inte hur mycket jag kan ha pratat om borgare utan att berätta över hur det här kommer att ske. Nej, jag vet. Kolla, jag är medveten om Jag vet om 
vad den här budgeten går till. Men jag vet inte riktigt vad det är om jag säger någonting om det här. Alltså så här. Om jag ska vara helt ärlig så har jag. Jag tror jag har listat ut hur det fungerar. Du har ett gäng charlataner. Okej, okay, charlataner. Så låter de. Eh, ljuga ihop ett kulturkrig. Så att de kan dölja all korruption som de sysslar med. Mm. Chang Fricke. Grejen är vad man gör så vet jag att det är typiskt idiotpolitik. Eh, alltså det, 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 det är inte ens en fråga om sån här grejer längre. Jag tycker, inte, jag tycker inte det ska vara en fråga. Jag tycker alla som tror att någonting bra kommer ur det här har intalat sig någonting väldigt konstigt. Måste, måste köpa glasögon rengöra. Men. Um, Chansfrick är ju en del av problemet. <hör> Framförallt kanske han blir en del av problemet. När det gäller vad amerikanska DOJ sysslar med. Ehm. Um, och eh, ryska infiltrationer. Men ja, ah, vad bra. För att det påminner mig. För att jag ska visa en grej om Chang eh, Det här har inte talats om i Sverige överhuvudtaget. Men det finns en kanal som heter Some More News. Eh, som drivs, drivs av eh, eh, Katie, Katie Stoll och eh, Cody Johnston. Eh, och de gjorde ett avsnitt om Tim Pool nyligen. I, ja, i det avsnittet så dyker Chang Frick upp. Och jag tänkte att jag skulle dra just den delen av det. Så är ni med på det? Är ni, är ni med på vad som händer nu? Amerikanska Somor News gör en, en grej och de pratar om Chang Frick. Vi börjar lite längre bak. Exakt, men det är bra nog Det är bra nog Det är bra nog. För nu får du en liten taste av vad deras journalistik Faktiskt innebär Så jag spolar lite tillbaks Bara så vi får lite Feeling Innan vi kommer in till Chang Frick Okej okay? Och jag har tillstånd av eh, eh, Summer nu som visar det här Det fick jag för några veckor sedan Så det är lugnt Fine Mr. Frick, ja. Precis. Men vi kör.
Uh, förlåt, 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 vi går tillbaks. Förlåt, det är jag som glömmer reglera. Fakta, så ta det till account. We guy he's staying with who once saw a single crime scene and also a kid setting off fireworks. Have, have there been any other incidents like that? Or Alla behöver inte säga mera of... ljud. Det räcker med att en säger det. Käften. Maybe, maybe not a murder, but have you seen robberies or a gang? No, not at all. I mean, there was one 14-year-old that that went that, that had like a pretty loud cracker. You know, the firecracker? Firecracker, yeah. Next, he talks to an anonymous dude who works in the car business and claims that a certain type of person steals cars. Basically, there's a lot of... I'm in the car business, and uh, that's okay for me to say. Uh, but the ma majority of like the crimes involved in car business, it's, it's never... Or I should not say never, because it happens, of course, that Swedes also commit crimes. But the majority of the crimes involved in car, like car thefts, um, like stolen parts, frauds. Um, yeah, true. It, we can see like, clearly behind the scenes that it's definitely one type of group of people. Still getting nothing. Tim just goes and walks around a problem area. The problem being that there aren't any problems there. So we're walking around Rosengard. It's uh kind of boring. Tim is clearly getting frustrated, and here's where we start to see the turn. For his next video, he meets with Chang Frick, a man he claims is a journalist who clearly has a poor opinion of immigrants. We're about to meet with Chang Frick, who some people say is controversial. They say that he's aligned with the right-wing party here. Others say he's a good journalist. The Swedes, if I use that word. Or, or immigrants who have been living here uh, yeah. for enough time, the criminality amongst these people have been really decreasing. So if we didn't have this big immigration, yeah. the numbers would be really low. Again, nothing happens. They drive around, go to a mall, and it ends with Tim looking at Chang's computer as he shows him photos of crime scenes. Could have just been an email. But what Tim is not revealing in this video is that Chang Frick is actually a former right-wing politician who runs the Swedish equivalent of the Daily Wire. He's not an expert, he's not a random citizen or impartial journalist. And this pattern would keep going. For his next video, Tim would meet up with Ivar Ivan Arpi, Arpi, who as the Daily Beast outlined, is just another right-wing columnist who once complained that Google results cater to the blacks and gays. Google, much like Grok, is woke, unfortunately. But again, Tim just says he's a personality and maybe controversial and shrugs it off. We're gonna go meet with this guy, Ivar, who is a journalist, he's a personality, and apparently has a really good perspective on what's going on here, though it might be controversial. I don't know, I'm not Swedish. I don't know, I'm not Swedish, says the guy who's specifically covering Sweden as a journalist. You see here how the guessing has begun. Tim has just completely stopped trying to give context and is just walking around talking to propagandists, extremely ready to take their word for it. These videos are amazing in that they show Tim's origin story in real time. He purportedly tries to do real journalism, gets bored, and by the end he's just flat out lying in order to push a right-wing perspective. Of course, maybe the big giveaway there was that he specifically went on a right-wing propagandist's dime. He talked to a single politician who immediately and rationally answers the question around immigration and crime. He hand waves the guy for being leftist, and then goes and talks to the most extreme racists he can find while vaguely calling them controversial. At one That's point, it. he runs into three dudes in a bowling alley who Tim claims he... Det, det är så jävla kul att Eva Rärpi nu internationellt är känd som en rasist. Tack vare Samor News så är Eva Rärpi känd internationellt som en rasist. He just happens to meet. They chat about immigration like it's a casual encounter. And what Tim completely omits is that those three random guys were actually three far-right conspiracy theorists, at least one of whom is known for blaming Jews for the Holocaust. They're just Nazi dudes that wanted to be in Tim's little movie. When Tim was confronted about this on an AMA, he just completely shrugs it off. He doesn't see the problem. 
After all, he got paid. Ultimately, Tim saw nothing substantial in his all expenses paid trip to Sweden. The most that happens is a part where he claims the cops escorted him out of an area lest he be assaulted by some ruffians. Jag fem att det här inte ens är sant. Uh, the police have just warned us that if, if we don't leave now and, and take this escort, it's going to get really bad really fast. They said 50 people could be here in minutes and they recognize us. They're masking up. We have to leave. Two things. Firstly, Tim, we can see hey, that there are families from. with kids yeah, walking business. around. It's a strip mall, not a war zone. Also, no. According to the Swedish police, they never told Tim Pool this. He's a liar. Now, to be clear, cops are also liars. But so is Tim. He's quite the also a liar. He's a and liar a weirdo of the liars. He's filming young people and they got upset. That's actually what happened. Tim Pool, cool skate guy, creeped out some kids. But this began Tim Pool's descent into the lucrative world of right wing guests. Men grejen är så här att det är så bra för varje gång någon pratar om Ivar Arpi nu, då kan jag bara visa det här. Han är känd internationellt som en rasist. För det är vad han är. Han är ett freak. <clears throat> Men i alla fall, jag vill bara visa samma news. Jag tror på snutarna här mer. Alltså om jag bara ska vara helt ärlig. Spola tillbaka telefonen ringde. Spola tillbaka till vad? Uh, jag tror på snutarna här För att uh, snutarna måste På något sätt försvara sin aktion uh, Det behöver inte Tim Pool göra <hör> Och det är liksom, okej, okay, var det oroligheter I Malmö Rosengård, nej uh, Det här är ett jättebra det, det, här är, det här är en del av en timme och 46 minuter video uh, som heter Tim Pool World's Worst Guesser av Summer News. Man borde se det. Uh, det är väldigt bra. Men en del av det handlar givetvis om Sverige vilket är varför jag tar upp det här. Ja, Chang, Chang var med där. Chang var eh, namngiven i det här. Både Chang och Ivar Arpi var namngivna som eh, propagandister och eh, rasister. Men vad då spola tillbaka? Du kan ju bara gå och se videon. Vänta. Oh. Det kan jag spåra tillbaka sen streamen är slut. Ja, jag lägger upp det här sen. Det kommer upp på Youtube så du kan spåra tillbaka. Ja, ja. Kolla här Mia. Jag demar dig. När det här är uppe på Youtube. Och så kan du eh, spåla fram dit. Så kommer du få se allting. Det som är viktigt. Jag, DM, jag DMar dig när det är gjort. Det blir enkl Jag tror att det blir enklast. Då det, 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 löser vi hela problemet. Det är, det är inte jättebrott om man ser det här. Så att... <laughs> Men det är The Daily Wire of Sweden. Det, det är typ vad det är. Kanske inte li riktigt lika <coughs> right wing. Men det är ju för att de ligger båda, båda publikationerna ligger alltid på linjen av vad som är acceptabelt. Så att Vänta, nyheter idag har varit på Dekis sedan april. 
Ha, det är intressant. Det är väldigt intressant. Men jag föreslår att om eh, ni behöver bra content om amerikansk politik och sådär. Summer News är eh, riktigt bra. Finns på Youtube. Ja, men det är konstigt ändå. Det är konstigt. Undrar om, någon, undrar om någon finns med i en viss indictment. <hör> ja, hur skulle vi kalla på? Ehm... Uh, jag ville kolla på lite Hassan. Jag vet att det blir att Hassan reagerar på någonting bla bla och jag reagerar på det. Men jag tycker att Hassan förklarar saker bra. Eh, och det har hänt en grej eh, som gäller indictments av DOJ i, eh, i USA. Va? Nej, jag kickar. Varför skulle jag kicka ur det? Jag har inte ki- Va? Jag har inte- Nej, det har jag inte gjort. Då vore jag extremt fucked up om jag gjorde det. Varför skulle jag kicka ut dig med? <laughs> nu har jag bara tar det så bara trött. Nej, jag hade aldrig tröttnat på dig. Um, herregud, jag har aldrig gjort det. Gud. Vilken konstig, vilken konstig anklagelse. Uh, jag skulle aldrig göra det. Jag har inte gjort det med någon. Hade jag gjort det hade jag sagt det. Det kan jag vara direkt. Uh. <clears throat> Men i alla fall. Det har skett en, en indictment uh, av amerikanska DOJ, alltså Department of Justice i USA har lagt en indictment om uh, uh, folk inblandade i interference i det amerikanska valet, framförallt 2016 men även Och eh, Tim Pool nämns där i bland annat. Och Hassan eh, har gått igenom det här rätt bra. Och jag tänker att vi kan kolla på det här lite. För jag är lite osäker på om jag kan... Och gud, sluta skapa nya fönster, Chrome. Snälla. Jag försökte skapa en ny flik. Herregud. Ja, men då gör vi så här. Hassan ja, vi... Hasan Abi Yoru! Ja, så. Uh, och anledningen till att det här är intressant för oss i Sverige det är för att uh, den här indictmenten uh, bygger väldigt mycket på hur, hur propaganda finansieras, okej? Okay? Så den bygger mycket på hur... Uh, hur propaganda finansieras, hur man gör och hur man äh, gör det effektivt. Äh, och äh, i där så nämns bland annat Tim Pool och lite andra. Och jag tror att vi skulle behöva en liknande utredning i Sverige. Jag ger det här till Hassan Abi att förklara om äh, varför det här är en grej. Äh, så. Och vi, jag kommer kommentera under tiden is the enemy of this country, Ukraine. <laughs> hey, yo! What? Yeah! This is... Uh...
Liverpool came out with a statement about being a pro-Russian propagandist, a paid pro-Russian propagandist. Yeah, it's not just Tim Pool, it's people with Tenet Media. This indictment alleges that right-wing commentators like Dave Rubin, Benny Johnson, Tim Pool, and Lauren Southern, as a part of the Tenet Media YouTube channel, have been unwittingly working for a Russian influence operation. Two people described them. Okay, so that's on my hand, so I can forklare det now. There is a channel called Tenet Media, som har eh, pushat ut rysk propaganda kan man säga. Eh, Tenet Media har fått eh, 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 väldigt mycket betalt av den ryska staten. Och de har tagit in gäster, bland annat Tim Pool, Benny Johnson, Lauren Southern, Lauren Chen. Och de har fått en väldigt stor del av de här pengarna i form av att sitta i en podcast som heter typ... Eh, The Culture War eller någonting sånt där. Och då fått pengar direkt från den ryska staten. Vilket de givetvis påstår att de inte har förstått att de har fått. The Tenet indictment as unnamed founders were very aware that their operation was funded by Russians. Tennessee business records list Tenet's founders as Blaze TV's host and TPUSA contributor Lauren Chen, aka Roaming Millennial, and her husband. Now let me tell you something, okay? I have not tried to f any of these people in this indictment, but the number one defender of Ukraine, who kept saying I was a Russian dissident or a Russian operative, has. You couldn't have Ask them why they were doing pro-Russian propaganda and how much money they were getting paid when you were trying to f Lauren Southern or when you were trying to f Roman Millennial when you were doing buddy-buddy conversations with these people, Destiny? What happened? This is also, it doesn't matter. Vindication or not, it doesn't f matter because the people that are so invested in me being a f Russian op, like a Russian operative, not a Russian There's opposition, a, the, the, are the, the, so... The big in later, oh yeah, Destiny som en content creator har ju då eh, målat ut Hassan som en Russian op och samtidigt samarbetat med de här som har direkt fått pengar från den ryska staten för att Hassan har då eh, ifrågasatt saker <laughs> invested in that they will never listen to reason they've already made up their minds they've watched all the youtube commentary videos from these dumbasses who kept saying like i was pro russia pro russia pro russia from the jump they will still continue with the investment that they've made but the 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 hassan går uh går lite länge nu om att han själv har blivit anklagad för han var en russian asset vilket han inte är um de andra var. <laughs> But I just want to point out, seems like who are pro Russia got got. Seems like who are paid propagandists got got. A new DOJ indictment that it alleges that RT employees covertly funded and directed by a U.S. company with 10 million in order to push pro Russia content. The company's based in Tennessee. There is one media company based in Tennessee with the same phrase listed in the indictment. The Canadian entity that owns Tenet Media, of course, is owned by Lauren Yu Sum Tam, also known as Roaming Millennial Liam Donovan on the board of directors. Or exactly. was it Roaming Millennial? Is that what her name was? Am I saying that right? What the f was her name? Lauren Chen. You know, people that uh, Destiny is definitely cozied up to over the last couple of years. It remains to be the truth that Canada is not sending their best. They're either sending their worst or they're sending their best in some instances. But like usually in the realm of politics, Canada is sending... So she was han var dålig på the initial delen of the Ukraine war. He's fine. När det kommer till resten av han, det. Han, han gjorde en dålig guess. Uh, han hade fel ett par gånger i ingången till Ukraina. I övrigt har han varit helt okej. Okay. Det har inte varit något konstigt där. Uh, det hade dock inte någonting med en pro-Russia stance att göra. Utan det hade bara med att han trodde inte att Ryssland var... Han, han tänkte inte att Ryssland var så dumma. Men, men det... det, det, det visa sig fel. <laughs> han har erkänt det flera gånger att han hade fel. Så det, det, det har aldrig varit en fråga nu. 
absolute worst. The indictment specifies that two of the people who work for this Tennessee company tenant were deceived, meaning they didn't know that the Russian government was running an influence op. Dave Rubin has 2.4 million subs and Tim Pool has 1.37. So the two people that were deceived, I guess, for a license, okay. Kalashnikov... Jag ska bara säga det här. Dave Rubin kan absolut ha varit dum nog för att gå på det här. Det, det, jag menar, han är den enda personen i det här gänget som absolut kan ha varit dum nog. Han sa att han inte trodde att Ryssland skulle invadera. Jag tror han går igenom det här. För han kommer gå igenom några av de här grejerna. Uh, vilket var fel, givetvis. Men uh, i övrigt så har det inte varit mycket rätt. Alltså, han har inte sagt så jättemycket konstigt egentligen. Afa, Afa Nasieva, founder one and founder two, worked together to mask U.S. company one's source of true funding, RT, by falsely portraying to commentator one and commentator two that U.S. company one was sponsored by a private investor named Eduard Gregorian. In truth and in fact, Gregorian was a fictional character. Benny Johnson also almost has 2.4 million, but they apparently rounded down from 137 to 1.3 million with Tim Pool, so I figured Rubens 2.4 million to 2.4 was the same. Helena Shudra shared with U.S. company one a video of a well-known U.S. political commentator visiting a grocery store in Russia. Mm -hmm. Afaz Nasieva posted the video in the producer Discord channel. Later that day, producer one privately messaged founder two on Discord. They want me to post this referencing the video that Afaz Nasieva had posted, but it just feels like overt shilling. Thinks we should put it out there. Producer one acquiesced, responding, all right, I'll put it out tomorrow. Now, what I find really funny about this is that like, why are we not doing this for Israel as well? Because that would of course mean literally virtually every Top level media commentator would be in the crosshairs in this way. Most of our politicians too. APAC gets to operate without ever being hit by Farah on a regular basis. What's that about? APAC just spent 20 million to oust two progressive lawmakers and Israel was caught running a $2 million influence campaign, but you'll never hear Russia gay stenographers utter a peep of protest. Yup, it's true. Isn't that pure? Alltså ska man prata Ukraina så var det många, eh, framförallt amerikaner då, som trodde att Ryssland visade musklerna när man ställde upp trupper utanför den ukrainska gränsen. Man trodde inte att Ryssland skulle invadera. Det var en ganska generell tankegång. Det var även en tankegång jag hade. Ska vi komma ihåg? Jag tänkte inte att Ryssland skulle genomföra det anfallet. Men eh, det gjorde man. Uh, nu var inte jag en live commentator då. Eller inte på det här sättet som jag är idag. Så man kan inte klippa mig på det. Really because Israel's an American ally and Russia is an American adversary. Is Israel an American ally? Do they seem to be operating like an ally recently? Because it doesn't feel like it. I don't know. What you're saying doesn't make sense because then Bob Menendez would be free right now. So would Henry Cuellar. Bob Menendez's crime is that he got payments. I fall. Förutom det här. T-shirt of the day i alla fall. Jag har Pet Cemetery på mig. Vilket är en jävligt snygg tröja. from Egypt, another American ally. Yeah, Eric Adams in trouble for getting payments from Turkey. Some legwork in this thread on identifying the other unnamed and very lightly masked commentators in this incident. Matt Christensen. Doesn't this guy hate me too? I feel like I've seen this guy make videos about me. I, I remember watching a video of his. Look, all I'm saying is for all of the uh, liberals who are super pro-NATO, who spent a whole litany of time talking about how pro-Russia I am, even though I fundraised for Ukrainian refugees pretty early on. It seems like all of my enemies who f despise me are named in this. So if you have ever found yourself personally aligned with any of those people mentioned, maybe you're not pro-Ukraine and instead simply using a horrifying situation like the invasion of Ukraine to your immediate advantage. Ops taking hard L's again. 100 P. Go. Tim Pool got 100K per episode and Ruby got $5 million per year. That is crazy money, by the way. Once again, grifting to the left is not a real thing. Grifting to the right, however, very, very profitable. Good 
money to be made there. Russians wanted them to post the Tucker Carlson grocery video, but they always thought it was too obviously shilling. Lauren Chen said to post it anyway. The Russians wanted to blame the ISIS Moscow attack on Ukraine. They got commentator three to do it. If Dave Rubin is commentator one, then I think Johnson is three and vice versa. To be clear, whether or not Benny was commentator one or the others, neither I nor the indictment are claiming he knew that he was working for the Russians. The question is whether he should have known or suspected is both philosophical and harder to prove. A statement of the Leo. Oh, they all have statements coming out. Oh, they have statements coming out now. My statement regarding allegations of the leaked DOJ indictment. Should these allegations prove true, I, as well as the other person, I was a comment. Well, if it's an anonymous that you're listening to Hassan, in you're listening to none of them. If someone says nothing about Hassan, then I'll try to get to it. Because, you know, often I think that I don't think Hassan has said it. Jag tror inte ens på klipp ni ger mig om Hassan. Jag måste se hela grejen. För folk är svin mot Hassan. Det, kan du säga? Han är goat. Det, det är liksom... Det, 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 han är based för det mesta. Det menar han kan säga fucked up shit. Det, det vet jag vad han gör. Men det är inte när det gäller sådana här seriösa frågor were deceived and are victims. I cannot speak for anyone else at the company as to what they do or to what they are instructed. Let me explain something to you guys, by the way. I get asked to do ads in the political realm all the time, all the time, especially during election cycles. Now, they're not paid propagandists for like a foreign government or whatever, obviously. That would require an additional layer of stupidity. But beyond that, why the f are you taking ads from any political operatives whatsoever? Why are you taking ads to be pro a certain political position? Isn't that exactly what you're supposed to be against? It doesn't matter that this is like pro Russia. Even if it was like pro gun laws or, or you know, pro guns, you shouldn't be taking that ad at all. The f is wrong with you? You're supposed to be independent media. So I don't do this. Aren't you supposed to have your own independent opinion on subject matters? Why are you taking money from a group, even if they're not pro-Russia, even if it was just a regular homegrown American political group? Why are you taking money from them to say certain things? How should any of your fans ever believe you ever again for the rest of time? Will you be paid for this take? Will you actually be telling your genuine opinion on this take? Do you agree if it was a pro-Ukraine ad? Yeah, even then. What do you mean? Even then, if you're a political commentator, you should not be getting paid by pro-Ukrainian media either. What the Either way, that's why I said if you're a Republican and you're getting paid by like a gun group or whatever, even if you're pro-guns as a Republican, you shouldn't be getting paid by a political group overall. Never at any point did anyone other than I have full editorial control of the show. And the contents of the show are often apolitical. Examples include discussing spirituality, dating, and video games. The show is produced in... Team pool dating is a classic that we should take up in this channel one time. Uh, han, är, han är väldigt bra med tjejer. Han är... Uh, jag, tänker att, uh, jag tänker att jag borde ta tips från honom när det gäller tjejer. Uh, det är väldigt bra tips uh, Tim Pool ger. Uh, jag, jag måste sluta vara soj. Uh, måste sluta måste sluta våga visa känslor uh, sluta ha militärkeps Stefan uh, oh, jag vet inte vad det jag vet inte vad det kommer göra ja ah, just det till skillnad från Tim Pool sluta ha en stor kök <laughs> <laughs> it is entirely by our local team without input from anyone external to the company. TCW is a separate company not associated with TimCast.com or other properties. It exists solely for the production of the Culture War podcast. That being said, we still do not know what is true, as these are only allegations. Putin's a scumbag. Russia sucks donkey balls. And to the journalists who wish to jump the gun, create their own narrative, or lie about what is currently going on, you can eat my Irish. If you're serially so...
Stupid that you didn't realize the 100k per episode you demanded to spread Russian propaganda wasn't coming from Russia. The DMV needs to revoke your driver's license and you can't be trusted with household appliances. Like, I just saw a guy giving me $100,000 to say nice things about Pootie Poo and I took it. Like, what? I think Tim Pool, now that I know his educational attainment, like, unironically might be that stupid. The only funny thing about this is that, like, paying Tim Pool $100,000 to be pro anything is automatically a waste of resources. Lest you ever think actual people pay to listen to Tim Pool, 90% of all of their revenue literally came from Russian shell companies. No, this is like one aspect of his entire production, I think. Tim gets uh, more multiple revenue streams. Tim himself gets revenue from his own channels as well, so the Russian money wasn't 90% of Tim's revenue. I think it was 90% of his revenue for the one entity that he created. Wait, what? He was got paid 100 grand per week? Oh my god, bro. 100 grand per week? Ukraine is the enemy of this country. Ukraine- <laughs> Hey, yo! What? Yeah! This is awesome. Oh my God. Okay, by the way, $100,000 you would be screaming like that too. $100,000 a week? Don't even. $100,000 a week? You'd be screaming. You'd be like, I hate you, crazy. Zell Disney's a homosexual man. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, bro. $100,000 a week, bro. That's crazy. Ukraine is our enemy being funded by the Democrats. I will stress this again. One of the greatest enemies of our nation right now is Ukraine. Bro, this is like mathematically the worst position to arrive at. Like, what do you Men, mean? Uh, like people say, I'm a- Ina Hassan säger det, för han kommer också säga det. Jag ska spåra tillbaka lite. Lyssna på hur Tim Pool pratar här. Det där är ett skript. Det där är inte någonting han säger. Utan det är ett skript. Han har fått någonting mejlat det. Varför skulle Tim Pool säga att Ukraine is our number one country? Tim Pool bor i USA. Det är insane. Nej, men jag sa ju precis det här. Karl säger, och Mia, du får bara vänja. Alltså, Hassan har betalt för att prata. Som man läser prata fort, antar jag. Tänker jag. Jag, jag tycker inte det är konstigt. Jag tycker inte han pratar för fort, men... Uh, each to their own. Men han har betalt för det här. Han sitter ju alltså åtta timmar om dagen och gör det här. Så, och det, det gör inte jag. Då hade jag gjort det. Då hade jag inte behövt sanera asbest. Era horer. Jag bara skojar. Förlåt, jag älskar det. Puss. Akkord bokstav. Horchatten. <laughs> ja, det är ni. Små luder. Hela bunten. En dollar per ord. <laughs> ja, men det är inte det här. <laughs> Va? Nej, nej. Men jag tar inte det som en kritik. Jag gjorde det bara till ett skämt. Va? Va? Ta inte så illa upp. Jag tar 10 000. <laughs> Okej. Okay. Jag tänker att varje gång... Jag tänker att varje gång jag kan formulera någonting in till bra din mamma skämt så borde jag få ungefär 5000 spänn. Tvungen att godkänna den där socialist one. Hey, what the fuck? <laughs> I alla fall. Så, så, så varje gång någon gör ett argument och jag kan typ Måldare in till ett bra din mamma skämt, då borde jag få 5000. Det, 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 det är min det är min typ av eh, acceptabelt jobb. Jag har det var slatt som inte var tillåtet, okej. Okay. Det blev väl mycket hor i chat. Det, det är lugnt. Fortsätt hora. Ni får hora hur mycket ni vill. 
Det är ingen som vi betalar. Nej, det är för att vi förrådar dem så fort det går emot våra värderingar. Det, 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 det är ett problem. I alla fall. Eh, jag, jag vill att vi lägger en viss fokus på hur Tim Pool pratar nu. För om man, om man vet hur Tim Pool pratar annars så pratar han aldrig så här artikulerat och välskrivet. Uh, Vi hodrar inte för min hund 10 000. Det är bra. Vi, vi sa att vi vet vårt pris. Damn! <laughs> om ni är snälla så eh, kommer jag visa er en eh, bra video om eh, eh, saker. Eh, men jag vill att ni lägger fokus på hur Tim Pool pratar nu. För han pratar inte från sig själv. Han pratar från någonting han läser. Det, det är min poäng. Nu kör vi. I will stress again, one of the greatest enemies of our nation right now is Ukraine. Bro, this is like mathematically the worst position to arrive at. Like, what do you mean? Like, people say I'm a shill for Russia because I'm always like, bro, we need to do a ceasefire. America's interest in Ukraine are not genuine. All they want is the continuation of war so they can, like, dump all of their older weapons. Like, ultimately, we need to come to the table and do a ceasefire like i never once would say ukraine is the enemy of russia that's insane bro they got no autonomy in this i'm sorry the people on the democratic party side that consistently talk about how like well this is what the ukrainians want are literally just straight up lying because if everyone in ukraine said no we don't want to do war what the we need to do a ceasefire immediately we, we hate being slaughtered america would still be like uh okay well you know what if it was okay for a couple more people to get slaughtered you know because we really like the situation right now that we're in currently we love that you guys have you know destroyed half of the russian artillery i mean it wouldn't take much before the cia literally puts a uh, psychopathic like rabid right-wing ultra nationalist in power if ukraine actually changed trajectory i think but again This proves the point that I was making, which is giving Tim Pool money to be pro anything is such an L for whatever your cause is, dude. I love that. Criminal elements of the U.S. government pushing them and guiding them and telling them what to do. Ukraine is now accused a German warrant issued for blowing up the Nord Stream pipeline, triggering this conflict. Okay, 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 okay. This is actually really instructive. Why did the he say it, triggering? They had it fucked up. Can I say triggering the conflict? Men lyssna nu, för det här är ju inte sant. Det är så man vet att han är på ett skript. Conflict. Okay, 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 okay. This is actually really instructive. Why did he say triggering this conflict? Bro, they blew up the Nord Stream pipeline after. That's number one. And number two, literally, I think he's reading a script. This is instructive. Match what he's saying here with my commentary to understand the difference in opinion, okay? If you want to know what someone who is like pro-Russia shill, literally getting paid to be pro-Russia, versus someone who's like, yeah, nah, dog, I think it's probably America that blew up the Nord Stream pipeline and not mother russia okay because it makes zero sense whatsoever like even when people used to clip the thing that i talked about with like the crimean bridge ukraine blowing up the crimean bridge yes it is still an attack on largely civilian infrastructure and therefore could be considered an act of terror but it's still born out of russia's invasion of ukraine so it's still ultimately in the hands of russia they would of course clip the second part out and say hassan says blowing up the crimean bridge is a an act of terror i would literally compare it to what russia does in terms of like attacking civilian infrastructure which is unjustifiable they would clip that part out to make it seem like i was simply saying that ukraine is doing terror or whatever there's a difference between that my analysis which still lends the blame in the hands directly of the responsible party russia versus this guy being like ukraine is the number one enemy of america ukraine has a valid interest in freeing their borders violator of their sovereignty the most moral and understandable and righteous cause our interest as the united states of america in ukraine not exactly in the same level of infallibility just want to offload our old ass equipment so the goddamn military industrial complex can turn a profit all while not a single american active duty service member is harmed in the process it's a win-win insane to call ukraine your enemy how the are they your enemy they were invaded dog yeah they they were just sitting there looking pretty waiting to be invaded by russia they are the enemy the biggest enemy bro forgot about like all the other things that he could be talking about on a daily basis like china or iran also stupid to say but like ukraine being the biggest enemy is 
awesome. I say right wing grifting is obviously an incredibly, incredibly fortuitous endeavor. And this proves it once again was a russian asset before people say hassan you like certain people that used to work for russia today i do abby martin used to work for russia today back in the day russia today was not the russia today it is now it definitely still had those same elements but pre-invasion of ukraine russia today used to do this very interesting thing where on the one hour they would have like someone who is like militantly anti-imperialist the next hour they would have someone who is like insanely right-wing just so you guys understand like their goal was to cause as much chaos and confusion in American politics. Of course, that's the point of their media campaign in general. It makes sense. America does it all the time. What do you think Voice of America is? Having said that, there was a time where Russia Today had like the funniest lineup of commentators where they would have like the anti-imperialism hour with like Abby Martin followed up by like, are the Democrats transing the youth? <laughs> Dude, I love this. Benny Johnson. Oh my God, this come up is his fire dude by the way when you see these names benny johnson tim pool lauren chen lauren southern remember what i always tell you you can tell a lot by a man and their political opinions by seeing who their enemies are there have been a litany of supposedly leftist political commentators that have on me for years and years and years spent a whole lot of time doing that as a matter of fact and i never really responded in kind what you have to remember is that's because i thought it was unproductive to on those guys because sometimes we're in alignment on certain issues i spent my time on these guys okay because i think it is really stupid to try to farm a nazi groped up base of support by on like random trans influencers on twitter or by on random leftist influencers who also had a lot of smoke for me you know what i mean i am not a deeply unserious person who's only invested in the drama <laughs> just remember that know beside whom you stand and know who a man presents himself as the enemy of great stuff overall really cool love the story in general big fan <laughs> big fan <laughs> Han har, han har God morgon! Mycket... Han har mycket rätt i det han säger. Uh... Liksom när Tim Pool läser det här om Ukraine is our enemy. Det, det kan inte komma från en amerikansk källa. Det måste komma från en rysk källa. Det måste komma från ett manus. Det, det är liksom... Det säger in, inte samma saker annars. Uh. Just det, jag lovar er en rolig video om uh, om Australien. Vi kan ju kolla på det här. Uh, you are the hungry jack. Burger King Burger King. Yes, sir. So, uh, jag vet inte om ni vet vem Friendly Jordis är. Uh, han är en amerikan, uh, australiensisk komiker. Uh, han är en australiensisk komiker som också är, gör journalistiskt arbete. Han har fått sitt hem bombat av gängkriminella <laughs> för att han har avslöjat grejer om deras eh, connections i politiken i lokala grejer i Australien. Uh, <laughs> det här är inte ett skämt. <laughs> han har literally fått sig han fick, <laughs> första gången de försökte bomba hans hem så bombade de hans grannes hem. Uh, och andra gången så bombar de hans hem. Uh, och det är för att han har gjort kopplingar mellan politiker och gängkriminella i Australien. Uh, jag såg hans video. <laughs> han är också bara väldigt rolig. Uh, han är en väldigt uh, <laughs> rolig dude. <laughs> så oartigt. <laughs> jag vet, han är... He's rude! <laughs> He's rude. <laughs> 
<laughs> Men han gör också väldigt roliga videos. Så jag tänkte att vi kan kolla på en av dem och ha lite kul. Det är fredag ändå, eller hur? Uh... Workers confess their sins. Or, should I say, hungry jacks workers confess their sins. Why would I be saying that? Well, it's a little in-joke with me and one of the largest continents on earth. We had to change our name from Burger King to Hungry Jacks. And a lot of people explained to me why that is in the comments, or at least they think that they did. <laughs> There's a lot of urban legends running out there. This one's sort of right. Still not though. Anyway, let's get to why we're all here. An ad for my live show. Take it away, me. I'm in Townsville next week, and I've added new shows in major cities like Katoom Ba and a few smaller places like Melbourne and Adelaide. Check the website for more. Well, that was definitely my voice. Anyway, let's go on to the uh, dessert, I suppose, of this story. We've done our mains. <laughs> I used to work at the Queen Street Hungry Jacks in Brisbane. Wow, fancy. In my first week, I saw a man propose in the eating area upstairs. Well, at least it was upstairs. That's... No, that's worse. There's more pigeons up there. Almost got rolled for my pouch. <laughs> well, you shouldn't have been flashing it around, should ya? Just a weird order. Had someone order a cheeseburger with no patty, no cheese, no sauce, and no pickles. Well, we all know what he would have got for lunch. I told you, Mum, I just want Wonder what you bitch! He makes the bread taste funny! <laughs> I thought it was a bit weird. Yeah, but did you ever think that you might be the weird one? Okay, then add ice popped up on the screen. So I made the ice burger. Microwaved it? It's not a burger at that point. It's just what you feed starving African kids when you need to get something in their mouth. Oh. It's just putty. And weirdly enough, the ice didn't melt. Dude, I wish Mythbusters was still going so they could get to the bottom of that instead of setting up two YouTube channels where I think they just bitch about each other all day. Still, <laughs> it'd be nice to know why that happened. The customer didn't return, so I assume they enjoyed the burger. Yeah, well, I would have enjoyed that burger. That's a... That's defying physics, I think. Might have just displayed that I don't know the first thing about physics might not be the scientific discipline. Now let's just move on and make fun of other people. Was working an overnight shift in Kalgoorlie. Oh, that's <laughs> mad. Did anyone go into the drive-thru with a horse? Cause that would be a little bit madder. Had two 15 year olds roll through at 4 a.m. In the horse costume, walked through the drive-thru. Holy shit, I'm psychic. Clearly hired weed, had the munchies. Isn't that everyone that goes to Hungry Jacks at 4 a.m.? That is not, no one is the exact opposite of your grandma thinking. I'll definitely beat the 4 p.m. early bird special if I go 12 hours before 4 p.m. Handed me $150 and asked, how many hash browns will this get us? <laughs> well, these days, what am I right? Stop no jacking up the right. price on hash browns. I remember when they were 30 cents. No, I don't remember when they were 50 cents, but still. After calculating it out and finding out that it was 88 hash browns at the time, see? Good boy. He understands the struggle. We asked them if that's what they wanted. They said yes. So all three of us, overnight workers, cooked furiously for 20 minutes after serving them the hash browns they took off. And later that morning, we opened. We found most of the bag of hash browns squashed into the ground <laughs> outside of the restaurant. Well, that story is amazing. I don't think it needs much more, but I just like how they're 15 because it just meets that perfect time in your life where you're moving out of childhood into coming into uni and so when you're in uni you're a stoner all the time being like mm, hungry jacks is open yeah let's go man you got that but you also have the 12 year old in you going yeah smash him smash him this doesn't get any less fun with each jump i suppose especially at kalgoorlie you should be glad that they were stoners instead of drunks because when alcohol's involved they're not smashing up hash browns they're smashing up the town my partner used to work at hungry jacks and she said that one time two of her colleagues got caught on CCTV having sex in their car. Oh yeah, making a little junior whopper, are we? And the manager put it up on screen so then... <laughs> come on, as if you wouldn't watch. Also, the manager accidentally paid her everyone's wages for the week and she quit and never went back. Oh man, come on though, as if that footage wasn't worth your week in wages. It was a little over six, how are you pulling in $6,000 working at Hungry Jack's? You're working on one of those crusty oil rig ones, right? I think it means all the stuff. Ah, oh, right, yeah.
That's that's fucking terrible wages then. The manager kept calling her. She never picked up. Lol. Yes, you got out with the bag. You're set for life. Six thousand bucks. Back in my HJ's days, love the abbreviation. Thank you for saving me time. I've eaten up it by explaining that it's an abbreviation. We used to dip rude non-meat eaters patties in the meat juice. To get rid of her. I knew you were doing it. It tastes too good, damn it. Friendly Geordies is not sponsored by Hungry Jacks. And instead kept coming back, complimenting us on how much better our vegan burgers are compared to others. And they are. They really, really are. Friendly Geordies would like to reiterate that he is not sponsored by Hungry Jacks, although he clearly, really, really wants to be. Also, us now being a 24-hour store, we regularly fed people four to five hour old grilled chicken. Oh man, that's yeah. only 30 Gaza, hours Gaza, less than Caltech stuff. Jag äter jättegärna på Burger King, uh, McDonald's, Max whatever. En någonting jag aldrig äter på de här ställena, då är det fan kyckling. För det är alltid torrt, det är vidrigt, det är äckligt. Uh, och jag provade KFC lika vidrigt där. Jag vet inte vad de gör med kyckling som gör det så äckligt. Jag måste hämta en ny snus då så här. Vänta. Hämta dig min lilla minikyl. Kolla här. Jag har aldrig varit i Australien. Jag har aldrig bott i Australien. Jag har släkt i Australien. Men det är för att min farmor och min pappa och hans då syskon bodde i Australien typ på 70-talet. Och min farmors syster bodde kvar och därför har jag släkt där. Ja men äh, Raxkullas jag säger det, det Det är så jävla äckligt Alltså ky- ba, då, då kan jag inte göra kyckling uh, Men jag, liksom, jag kan äta allting annat om man. Mm. Så jag har släktingar i Perth uh, Men jag har aldrig träffat dem eller så. Jag har bara pratat med dem på typ Facebook Uh, farsan har ju varit där nere efter de flyttade hem till Sverige igen. Uh, givetvis. Uh, uh, men det är den enda kopplingen till Australien jag har nu. Men jag gillar Australien. Jag gillar, jag gillar att det är lika trash som jag är. Gud, alla är så trash. Det är som en enda stor trailerpark. Jag älskar det. After 9 p.m. since the time the broiler would get cleaned, we never sold enough grilled chicken to warrant cooking it fresh. See, I've always been sus about the chicken at Hungry Jack's. Much like the vegan patties, it just doesn't taste right, but for the wrong reasons. Used to work in a Hungry Jack's. <laughs> Why don't you abbreviate it? In South East Brisbane, a customer once came back complaining that their bun had mold on it. <laughs> Picky, am I right? After checking that it did. If fair enough, you had to check oh, it. After all, they oh, are... Uh, den här storyn är fruktansvärd. Kolla här, allihopa som är lite känsliga för mat. Håll i er. Håll i er. Då har kusin och morbror som bor i sig. Ja, ah, okej. Okay. Nice. Jag menar bor i Perth. Så... Jag har aldrig träffat dem då. Jag vet vilka de är. Jag pratar med dem lite på eh, Facebook som sagt. Men alla som är lite. <laughs> jo, men lite, lite så socialt vanligt. Men alla som är lite känsliga för mat håller i nu. Vi börjar om den här storyn. För den, är, den är bra. Den är fruktansvärd dock. But once came back complaining that their bun had mold on it. <laughs> Picky, am I right? After checking that it did. Fair enough, you had to check it. After all, they are a Hungry Jack's customer. I mean, they are purchasing a burger called the Whopper. My Whopper is my bond. Oh, we couldn't find a night helmet in time. We found that all of the buns that we had in the back 
had some amount of... <laughs> oh, yuck. Some amount of mould on them. Ugh. I can taste the mould, which really disturbs me that I know what that tastes like. Living in the future is fucked. Nevertheless, we decided to continue serving them. I, you know what I love about these fast food videos? You always have the inkling that it's exactly like The Simpsons, that they're just pumping out all the salmonella that they possibly can. But it confirms everything and then some. Like, come on. Oh, what, someone shat on a bag of chips and left it outside? Well, then dust it off and refry them. I don't care that it's diuretic, just do it in your break. Nevertheless, we decided to continue serving them and just toast them for longer to kill the mould. Well, yeah, they probably would. I don't know, I'm not a biologist. That's See, again, that is not the scientific discipline I'm looking for. That one is obviously physicist. Anonymous, please. No. I was the main opener for the burger room. What's the main opener for a burger room? Are you like a cover band or something? I guess we'll never know, Mr. Anonymous. And more importantly, what the fuck is a burger room? I thought the whole thing could just be... We could have solved so much by not calling it a Hungry Jacks and just called it burger room. Anyways, one day at five in the morning, I walk into the store and smell a strange scent. Didn't think anything of it until I get to turning on the broiler where I find that the gas valve was left on all night because the previous night's monkey brain closed and it would be monkey brain. <laughs> Who's, who's working at 4 a.m.? There's very little banana content in these veggie patties. <laughs> so I call my manager over, he looks at me and says, the store could blow up right now. That's amazing that like you just have to defer to your superiors for even that level of thinking. Oh no, sparks are coming down from the roof. I better call my manager. My manager then goes on to make a few phone calls. What, so he had to go to his superior? Leave the building. Hello, Jeff. Yeah, good, good. Uh, this is more of a business-related call. There seems to be spikes coming down on one of my employees. So yeah, Queensland wasn't far off from having its own fast food Chernobyl. That is so accurate. It's like that scene in Chernobyl, except instead of disposing of graphite, they're disposing of whoppers. It was a pretty average day, all things considered. <laughs> Queensland. <laughs> we used to do what it's we- It's a pretty, pretty average day considered. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I love the slow as a man. It's a pretty hot day, considering. <laughs> you heard for explosion, huh? They're fine. They're fine. Det är så jävla, det är så jävla mycket jag bara. Oh shit, jag kunde ha dött idag. Oh well. <laughs> Queensland. Things considered. Queensland. We used to do what we call sneaky pickles. Well, as we know from the controversy of 2024, I should never assume that everyone knows what sneaky pickles are because you didn't know what pickle races were <laughs> and I don't know what sneaky pickles are either so I'm very happy to find out what it is. This is when you try and put a pickle in someone's burger that's not supposed to have pickles. That's I knew you were doing that too. Hot, it got to the point where we'd start putting pickles in everything from ice, ice cream, ice cream. Now I wish that Burger King exploded. <laughs> Nuggets, then someone got fired. Well. I'm glad that there's some accountability. Bloke at my local Hungry Jack's overdose in the bathroom. 
that has 39 likes. It's what the people want. And wasn't reported for days because none of the kids working there wanted to check or clean the bathroom. Oh my God. You know, people say all the time that we fall for urban legends on this. So let me just fact check it and... Nope. No, that was a real thing that happened. Just like that school exploding in the video that has the school exploding in the thumb. You can check that out in your own time. We changed the thumb because you thought it was underperforming. Nonetheless, <laughs> you can check out one of our videos. Please click on one of our videos after this. My friend who worked at BK. Oh, how much fancier does BK sound than HJ? Ours is an abbreviation for hand jobs. BK sounds like DK. Fancy. BK. Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong's a way better name than Donkey Kong. He's not a fucking donkey. Look, if you guys want us to make a Bonky Kong shirt, I would be more than happy to oblige. Let us know in the comments. I'm pretty sure we can't get sued for it. I mean, they got sued by King Kong and they didn't win in court, I think. Look, I don't know. I'm not a physicist because we're Yanks. I didn't know that you knew that you are Yanks. Are you just saying... Yeah, me, it was on Wells Fargo in the week. I support the law of a hellion. So. North was working the drive through late at night while the main floor is closed. Their policy was that you needed to be riding something. It didn't matter what that thing was, just as long as you were riding it as you went through the drive through. I wonder where this is going. A homeless person comes walking through and he turns him away, but tells him if you can find anything to ride, He'll serve him. <laughs> this is sick. Oh my God, what a closer. Sure enough, homeless dude comes back and he's definitely riding a form of locomotion. He's piggybacking on another homeless person. I was right about the horse thing. The horse trick works. Success. This is the best one of these videos we've ever done. And there's one sentence to go. It fitted the description and they got their food. Okay, well that last sentence was a lot like House of the Dragon where they seem to have the cliffhanger scene and then just add another scene on the end of, should we have tea? No, I don't really feel like it. Da, 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 da. What a comment. This is why I like having a global audience now so that we can share stories from across the world that let's be honest are pretty much the same. There's You're not much difference the between these ones and the McDonald's ones. Yeah, that one's also with the links. <laughs> See you next time, where I'll give you a lecture on- Kolla, folk som säger att Socrates inte förtjänar det har bara läst selektiva Socrates, uh, uh, Socrates uh, quotes. Whatever. <coughs> jag tror jag gjorde en poäng av det här på Blue Sky. Bygger mig jag inte har sett, givetvis. Jag skulle skälla ut mig igen, men jag ångrar mig. Nej, så här är det. Jag gjorde alla... Jag vet inte vad som har hänt i historisk råd. Alla började prata om Rom helt plötsligt. Jag blev tröttnad lite på det För att... De enda som bryr sig om Rom är medelålsmän som har en jävla kris. Vi är typ de som pratar om rum på Blue Sky. Uh, så jag flippade och valde att göra en egen tråd om viken här på Grönland istället. Och den fick initialt inga likes. Och inga likes utav de som pratar om rum hela tiden. Uh. Men det är lugnt, det är lugnt. Den har fått likes. Den har framförallt fått likes av eh, norrmän. Folk som bryr sig om historia. Och sådär. Så det, det, det är fint. Det är lugnt. Den här tror jag var det. Ni vet att det fortfarande står en kyrka på Grönland va? Den norska kolonisationen dog inte ut förrän efter pesten eftersom det dödade ut all form av transport och förnödenheter och byggmaterial och liknande. Eh, vigningsboken finns kvar. Den 16 september 1408 vigdes det sista paret på Grönland. Vad är han i kyrkan? Jättefin. Oj, nu är jag vägen. I Så, nu ser man. Nej, jättefin. Jaha, vänta. 
Let's go around this. So. <coughs> Uh, nej, de, det blev ju svält på grund av att de inte fick förnödenheten av de behövde. Det är svårt att göra nya spjut utan metall. Det är svårt att göra nya knivar. Det är svårt att göra något nytt alls utan förnödenheten av de behövde. Uh, jag länkade poddavsnittarna, bla bla bla. Uh, skrev också så här... Uh, det var någon som skrev, var det inte islänningar? Ja, jo, okej. Okay. Vi kan vara petty. Men det var inte islänningar då. Det var normen. <hör> Island var inte en grej. Island var en norrländsk koloni. Eh, Norge koloni. Eh, för alltid ska någon gå in och göra så här när man pratar historia. Jag hatar att prata historia online. Alltid. Ska någon gå in och säga Jag trodde det var isledningar Fuck you Du vet precis vad jag menade När jag sa det jag gjorde Norge sa fibro Ja, jo, precis Men vi pratar inte om det det är inte en del av diskussionen. Uh. <hör> Men liksom den här, den, här, den här nerven folk har. Den här nerven folk har. Att måste gå in att typ. Jag kan faktiskt en detalj som du inte sa. Jag är så jävla äcklig. Jag hatar den. Jag vill ha jävlen. Det är därför jag aldrig pratar historia på Bluska. Uh. I alla fall. Ja, ja. <skratt> jag tänker avsluta streamen där för idag uh, Vi får ses en annan dag Nej Jag kanske kan streama imorgon kväll. Jag får, jag får se. Uh, i, I så fall blir det... Uh, om jag streamar imorgon kväll så blir det helt oseriöst. Och ingenting uh, politiskt eller någonting. Uh, tack för att ni kom förbi. Skulle jag säga. Det är mer än, det är mer än vad jag kan begära. Nej, det blir UFO så skit. Saker du gillar, Mia. Uh, tack för att ni kom förbi. Jag uppskattar verkligen det. Tack, Kalle Katt, för att du kommer hit. <laughs> gillar verkligen att se dig här. Um, gillar att du har blivit en regular uh, i casten. Ehm. <clears throat> uh, Och så ses vi i eh, kanske imorgon eller eh, nästa vecka. Det beror på. Eh, vill ni höra någon musik? Kanske. Jag vet, jag vet musik ni vill höra. Vi avslutar med en copyright strike tänker jag. Svastning av kameran Där Nu kör vi Nu kör vi allihop Blod och våld Smit och knark Tär och död Mr. X och Clark Med lång och blond Och kallt och mis Med vad Tommy har Let's go.
svensk polis Han skrev hem Till sin far och mor Som långt bort I sin stuga bor Om jag dör På ett våldsamt vis Så dör jag dock Som en svensk polis Puss på er.